All right, the garden's starting to wind down now, but you know, it's a real busy time of the year trying to get everything put away. So here I'm dehydrating some Principe tomatoes and there you can see, um, I did them about 26 hours. It wound up taking at 135 and they're still a little sticky when I got done. So I put them in uh, these bags. I'm gonna throw them in the freezer like we normally do. And then it was time to go out and start picking some peppers. We um, got a bunch of big peppers this year. We've been using them all along for all different kinds of cooking and sausage and peppers on the grill and stuff. And uh, my wife wanted to throw a couple of these big ones in the freezer for stuffing this winter. So I went out and I grabbed a, you know, I just grabbed a handful of them and then also I'm going to dehydrate some of the Anaheims this year. I decided to try and I only put in four plants this year. Normally I put in more but it's always too many and these four plants look like they're um, probably going to put out about 40 pounds of peppers in the end anyway. So four is more than enough and see the eggplants are getting near the end of their life. They're just about done but um, still lots of them to pick and eat that we've been working on. So I got uh, this load, the cart all loaded up and going to go back up to the house. And this little golf cart has really been handy this year. So my wife, I gave her the um, the peppers to deal with. And you can see they're nice size. Well, they're going to be really good for stuffing. And she's just uh, getting them ready to throw them in the freezer now. As I've shown in the other videos about freezing peppers, they're really super easy to freeze. And you just have to take the core out. Now she likes to use a grapefruit spoon to go in there and just clean out those ribs and stuff. It does it really quick and easy and um, you know it, it's, it gets them nice and clean and ready for stuffing. So she's going to go through and uh, do this batch of peppers and then we'll throw them in the freezer and uh, flash freeze them. Then we'll put them in some vacuum bags later uh, once they're frozen. So there, there you can see they come out nice and clean. And, time for me to start dehydrating some of the Anaheim and I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse off first here There's really nothing on them but a chance of maybe a bug or a little bit of dirt so start by doing washing them off and I decided I'm gonna try doing them in quarters uh, seemed like the easiest way to do them so I'm just gonna split them split them into four pieces here and then just use that grapefruit spoon to scrape out the seeds which really uh, you know, it does a really nice quick job and uh, does, cleans out the rib and everything pretty nice. Now I, I probably should have had gloves on here because these things do have a little bit of heat but um, I didn't at this point in time. So I got them all prepared to go on the dehydrator racks and now I'm going to load up the dehydrator here and I could only use six of the 12 racks with these because they're just a little bit too uh, too thick to be able to get all the racks in place without knocking the other ones off. So. Basically, you can only do a half load when you're dealing with stuff that's thicker than, you know, maybe about five-eighths of an inch. So I just filled up the racks and, uh, you know, slid them in. and It's just uh, one one rack after the next. Um, so it does take a, a little while to get it filled up, but you can see the peppers are all really beautiful this year. And, you know, I wanted to really try to dehydrate them. Usually we throw them in the freezer, but... We're running out of freezer space, and um, you know this is what I got the dehydrator for. So I'll see how they come out in a little while. So I got that all loaded up. You can see the six racks, and um, there's not much space between them. And time to turn it on. And I decided to do these at the uh, 135, like I do all the other vegetables. And I uh, I started them. I think what was it, 16 hours? And I wound up adding a couple hours to it to get them really nice and dry in the end so I let them run overnight and the next day they were basically all done ready to come out and uh, be packed away so there you can see how much they actually shriveled up and dried up and this time I, I did remember to put gloves on because I found out once you dehydrate these things and touch them they really are um, seems like they have a lot more heat than when you you start with them so you don't, you know, when you by the time you get them off the trays, you can see there's about maybe, uh, you know, maybe one fifth of what you started with, or even less. And they all dried up really nice, and they they look good. So can't wait to use them this winter for chili. And I thought I'd fit them all in one of those big half gallon jars that are I found out are useless for canning. So um, 
I started loading one up, but it turned out they just they just wouldn't fit. Uh, so I wound up uh, using three of the wide mouth quart jars that we had laying around, and they just fit perfect. They were just the exact length to fit in there, and they uh, you know they packed in there nice and tight, easy to pack. As you can see, I've had this dehydrator pretty much running constantly for about a week now, trying to you know pack up some of this stuff. And then it's time to just vacuum pack them with the uh, the seal food saver there. And um, I've been having a little bit of trouble with it lately. Um, it does uh, you can't it won't shut off when you do the jar. You have to turn it off before the pump burns out. But also after you do a jar or two, the um, the unit actually starts to uh, act up on you. I think there's something going with it in the vacuum switch or something like that. So you can see um, I'm able to get through two of the jars and a couple of little pieces poking up I had to push down just so the lid would seal properly. And uh, it's time to seal the second one. Then I hooked up the sealer to the third jar and hit it. And it just uh, started pumping and all of a sudden it starts doing this. Just flashing and locks up. So I think it's uh, it's on its way out. But I'll, I'll know, you know after a couple more usage. So there's the um, all the Anaheims there. All sealed up. And then I made some labels with that Cameo print and cut. And they're ready to go down into storage. Now it's back out to the garden the next morning, and uh, you can see those big sunflowers finally came in. They're probably 12 to 14 feet tall with just uh, beautiful heads on them, a whole different color than the little ones. And there's my, my one pump, big pumpkin that's growing. It's probably, I, I'm guessing it's probably up around 30, 40 pounds by now and just keeps on growing. So, And one more of those uh, multiple flower head sunflowers came up again too by itself. You can see this is first thing in the morning and, uh, you know, everything's just waking up. And there's the old sunflowers, the original ones. They're all dead and being, being eaten by the birds, so they're enjoying them. And these new ones are just, you know, a real pretty sight to look at out there in the morning. Just so tall and uh, such a bright color on them. So, you know, it's nice to have uh, two different batches of sunflowers. And then it's time to pick the beets. If you remember last year, um, a raccoon or something ate every one of my beets the night before I went out to pick them to make pickled beets. So I figured today, this year I'm going to grab them a little bit earlier in the season while there's still other things around for them to, you know, grab onto and eat. And I didn't really take good care of the beets. I just put the seeds in. I didn't weed them or anything this year. They just kind of got overgrown with weeds and stuff but um actually i did wind up with a lot of beets in the end just this little box here uh half full of beets you can see i filled up my first half bushel basket there and had to get another container to to start putting the rest of them in so there's my my haul for the pickled beets for today looks like it'll be enough for a batch and i grabbed a couple eggplants here too for my wife to cook up later and you can see the plants are just about at the end now. They're starting to die off. But um, So I loaded up the cart again. And there's the, uh, there's the cart. That thing's really been a handy thing for getting back and forth, you know, to the garden. And my wife's letting me drive today. So, so I'd go by the elderberries and show you. They're just about ready. But they did terrible this year. Um, some reason the plants didn't have many berries on and some of them even died I think it was a drought last year that did a lot of them in so I got back up and I started sorting the beets according to size so I you know cook them all at different times to uh, not overcook them and grab some greens and then the rest of them go right back on the cart down into the compost pile and a couple hours later I've got 16 nice uh, pint jars of pickled beets ready to go down in the root cellar and you can see I put 09 on them, but it's really 08. I thought I was going to be a little later making them. So, And then I've got another load of the Principe tomatoes in the dehydrator. My wife made a fresh eggplant parmesan with the eggplant I picked. And these this time I'm trying to vacuum seal the tomatoes to just put down in the root salad cellar. I did them at 145 degrees and they uh, came out really nice and dry. So um, I think they'll stay that way. And... You know, you can see I got, uh, it's a busy time of the year trying to get things put up and peppers dried, but the egg, 
the um, sunflowers are really looking good. And we've really been enjoying that golf cart for bringing up loads every day like this to the house from the garden. It really helps out a lot. And that Cameo 3, I'm making labels for everything, and I've really been enjoying that also. It's been a great thing to add to the, you know, my collection. So there's our pickled beets all ready for, uh, to enjoy this winter. And some more dehydrated, or dehydrated tomatoes here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.